All right, so um, thank you for coming to this workshop. Uh, this is also related to yesterday's talk. So I would encourage you to actually watch the video for uh, yesterday's talk if you didn't attend, because I will be talking about, you know, the, what I talked about yesterday, uh, for example, how to research the program uh, is actually also uh, relevant to um, um, anyone who is applying for the PhD. So, but uh, the link is not ready yet, so I will send you the link when, when it is ready. So this is um, today's talk. We try to help you and uh, offer you some suggestions on how to write a personal statement for PhD um, applications. But before we do that, I want to sort of throw out this, this uh, annoying question, you know. Uh, are you sure you, you want to do a PhD? Uh, is doing a, bit, a PhD uh, the right move for you, right? Because uh, at, at any time when you make a decision, you have to consider uh, uh, the other options, right? And you have to compare the different uh, possibilities. So I think uh, there are different things you need to think about. So the first thing I want to warn you is that uh, the opportunity cost for doing a PhD is very high. Because uh, in the next five years, you know, after you graduate from the uh, university, you know, this is probably going to be the most productive five years in, in your life because you are not married yet. Okay, this is one of the reasons. Because once you get married, uh, you can imagine, you know, there's all this um, distraction, other responsibilities and, and commitments. So you have to think very carefully, you know, um, before you get married, uh, you want to spend the time and trying to uh, do something that will uh, lay the foundation for your future uh, career development. And also, as I was talking about uh, uh, earlier, you know, PhD expects original research. Okay, so that means it's very different from uh, a master or undergraduate work. You know, at undergraduate level, most likely you just uh, apply some uh, of the knowledge from the textbook and try to solve the problem, and most likely. Um, uh, the problem may have uh, more or less the fixed answers, right? But um, for PhD, you are going to venture into uh, some some areas, you know, trying to identify some problems that other people, maybe other people have tried to solve the problem, but you have to come up with some better solutions, okay? And and you want to try something new, okay? So so uh, you don't know whether you will you will succeed. So this is part of um, you know also the charm of doing research is that. It's not always predictable. Okay? You, you, you could um, run into trouble, and maybe you will, um, you will discover something uh, truly revolutionary. So anyway, um, so somehow you have to be a, a relatively creative person, okay, in order to do a PhD. And then also, not everyone can make it. Well, the thing is, you, you usually uh, meet with PhD. Uh, those are people who succeeded, who, who who made it. But there are people who who couldn't make it for whatever reasons. Okay, so uh, maybe one thing you need to do is when you apply for a PhD program, you can uh, ask around and and figure out whether uh, there's uh, information available about dropout rates. Okay, how many uh, uh, people eventually uh, graduate from the PhD program? Okay, but as I said, you know it's a, it's a uh, a lot of commitment. That's why actually for many different reasons, you know, some, some people couldn't make it. And again, you know, uh, when you when you do the PhD, you have to do a lot of uh, lab work, you know, analyze data, and uh, it's going to be boring and repetitive. Okay? Even though you, have, you find a topic very interesting, you still have to deal with a lot of uh, um, pretty uh, boring work. So, so you have to uh, bear with that. You have to, you need a lot of patience, okay? So uh, another thing is uh, do not pursue a PhD simply because you cannot find a good job, okay? Well, actually, in Hong Kong, if you apply for a PhD, uh, you will get a stipend, which is somewhat similar to, uh, you know, the average salary of a, of a university graduate. Okay, so so the government is offering the the kind of compensation so that you don't have to work, but you can pursue a PhD. But uh, um, you know, don't think of PhD as a way to sort of you don't have to find a job or anything. Okay, so um, that's. Something you need to think about. Well, I didn't really answer the question. This is the question for you to think about. I sort of just talk about some uh, different uh, things that you, you need to think about. Okay? But then, of course, I want to still encourage you to, to um, consider the option very seriously because there's huge rewards um, of uh, doing a PhD, which includes um, because you're doing original work, so um, you're uh, sort of part of the community. Part of the research community that try to create new new knowledge about the world. Okay, so it's not going to be that that you single-handedly create a new theory or anything, any sort of revolutionary 
uh, ideas, but at least you know you're part of the community. You're trying to uh, help um, uh, us understand uh, the world better. Okay, so that's that's kind of rewarding. Uh, it's all right, and um, also you get a the freedom to choose to work on a problem that interests you. I think this is probably more true for um, people who are doing the. Uh, social science or humanity uh, research, but for um, natural sciences or engineering, uh, you are probably going to work in a research team, and uh, the supervisor, your supervisor, and the um, team leaders usually will have an agenda. Okay, so we are probably uh, going to work on their projects, but still, you you, you get a uh, some freedom to choose on. Um, uh, to choose the the problem that that you find somewhat interesting, but of course it has to be interesting to your, your supervisor as well. So so that is why um, you have to sort of choose a supervisor that uh, that is willing to um, uh, supervise you to help you um, to pursue your interests. And with the PhD, then you can get an academic job. Hopefully, um, that would come with a lot of freedom and flexibility. As you can see, in most English speaking universities. Uh, the semester is very short. You know, we only have like 13 weeks, and uh, if you have you are, you are like a professor or assistant professor, you only teach like two courses a semester. So there's a lot of time for you to um, work on your own projects, to do research. Of course, there's the pressure for you to publish, but um, I think um, you know, considering the amount of uh, teaching that you have to do, you know, it's actually a pretty um, um, a good deal. Alternatively, you might uh, get a, a research position in the industry, right? You work for the R&D uh, department for some uh, major corporations. Then you also uh, have the opportunity to apply the, your, your skills and talents to solve some of the real world problems. That could be also very rewarding. And most importantly, I think this is a very important point, is that if you think about the, our world nowadays, I think the majority of people Actually, they have their life somewhat scripted, okay. So uh, when I say the life is scripted, uh, maybe uh, you can consider the example of like bus drivers or any uh, manual labor workers, even even the the, the uh, white collar uh, officers. You know, the way they they do their work is pretty much they just follow the instructions. They just do it over and over again, and and um, you know, you will get bored, right? Um, but if you, you, you get a, a research position job or academic job, you will never get bored because you can always, you know, try to um, uh, choose some new problems, new challenges to work on. Okay, so I think that's one of the um, most exciting thing about working an academic job is that uh, your life is going to be quite exciting and unpredictable. Uh, unlike, you know, some other people's life is kind of, you can see through the whole, whole, whole thing, okay? So um, hopefully you can still um, feel excited about the possibility of doing a PhD, all right? Um, so um, what do you need um, before applying for a PhD program? Uh, well, today, uh, today the, the topic is uh, writing personal statement, but um, at one point I want to make here is that actually the actual writing of the personal statement is, is not uh, the most important part, okay? It's, it's the things that you have to do before you write your personal statement. That's more important. If you do all the preparation right, then writing a personal statement should be quite a quite a easy thing, right? So 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 you have to do the do the work that, that would uh, get you ready to write a personal statement, right? So first of all, you need some kind of background knowledge and skills in the field, and this is where uh, you need to sort of review. What you have done at, at this university, right? For your undergraduate degree, what what are the courses you have um, taken, and what are the different skills that you have developed um, through different uh, contexts? Uh, and then, based on the knowledge that you have and the skills you have, you can then decide, you know, uh, in which area you want to do a PhD, right? And hopefully, you you, you need some kind of uh, research experiences. We're not talking about you have to work in a lab for many hours. It could be just a, a small project or even you know part of the coursework that involves some research that would be good. Because you still, when you write your personal statement, you do need to talk about uh, some of your research experiences, right? Uh, you want to tell the readers that you actually know a little bit about research and you're interested and you have developed some skills um, that um, you can also apply to uh, future research projects, right? And also, you need to have a somewhat clear uh, research interest. This is kind of tricky because I think it depends on whether you want to uh, go to US or UK for a PhD. Okay, if you want to go to US, 
you probably don't need to have a very clearly outlined um, sort of path for doing research because in the U.S. the uh, PhD program is, is longer. You know, you have like five, sometimes up to 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 ten, uh, eight years. Uh, I don't want to scare you, but some people do spend spend a whole decade to get a PhD. Um, but because in the U.S. you have more time, so usually you start by taking some courses where you can actually explore different possibilities. So you don't necessarily have to have a very clear focus up front. But for for uh, UK and Hong Kong, if you want to do a PhD, you need to submit something called research proposal. And that is where you need to actually sort of outline uh, the research topic and also talk about how you're going to collect the data, analyze the data, what's your theoretical approach, you know, all that. So if you want to go to UK or Hong Kong, you need to have a pretty good idea of what you want to do, okay? But but I think even for the US, you, even for the U.S., I still encourage you to try to clarify a little bit, you know, uh, what you want to do, right? So this is this is quite uh, important because once you have a pretty good idea of of what you want to do, then you can uh, try to come up with a list of potential PhD supervisors. Okay, so that's actually a, a very important step. Okay, of course. There are people who get into the uh, uh, PhD program without contacting any uh, professors, right? But but I think it would be much more likely for you to get an offer if you actually um, talk to some professors and they sort of uh, interested in your cases and want to take you as their PhD students. Okay, so I do encourage you to try to look into different uh, possibilities. Okay, uh, so look at who will be your supervisors. And then, somewhat related to to looking for your supervisors, you have to be familiar with a, a body of academic literature, okay? Because doing research is one of the most important step you have to do is to review the literature, okay? Because you have to look at the literature to to have an idea, you know, for this given problem, what other scholars, the scholars before you, have done to try to solve the problem. Okay, and then you may want to uh, try to come up with some new ideas and try to tackle the problem in a, from a different perspective, and then you can make some contribution. But as you can see, uh, all the contribution, all the work will be built upon uh, earlier scholars' work. So this is very important. It is very important for you, for us to get familiar with with the academic literature. Okay, uh, other people's work. And this is if you if you know more about the literature, you can actually try to find your uh, your uh, PhD PhD supervisors uh, through uh, the the authors. Okay, the authors of the academic articles could be your uh, PhD uh, supervisors. All right, so so we're going to talk about that a bit later, uh, a bit more. And then you also need to um, commit yourself to the research program. Okay, because. PhD is a is a is a um, long journey. Okay, um, we're talking about. Uh, Five years at least, right? For if you're, you're doing it in the U.S., okay, commitment is is very important. And then um, your referees or your references, you know, uh, at at this university, HABU, they are also very important. So think of your your references, not just someone who will write your recommendation letters. You should think of them as your, you know, as a team of of, of support. Okay, so 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 they will provide uh, help and support uh, throughout the process of applying for the. A PhD program. Okay, so so try to talk to your teachers, and and see who will be willing to 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 help you and provide you the the kind of guidance you need. Okay, um. So these are the things that that you need to uh, prepare. Okay, before you um start applying for the PhD. But basically, I think the most important thing is to uh, clarify your uh, research interests. Okay, based on what you have learned, and also your own uh, personal interest. Your strengths, your talents, your skills—you have to decide, you know, which area you want to focus on for your PhD, and then based on that, you can try to identify your uh, potential PhD supervisors. And I want to talk about three different ways uh, through which you can find your PhD supervisors. And I will uh, mainly focus on number one and number three because uh, number one and number two, because number three is kind of straightforward. Okay, number three is basically you talk to your your teachers and your friends at HABU or. Anywhere else, you know, and if they know someone who may uh, take you as a as, as a PhD student, then that would be good, right? Through kind of networking, you can, you can identify the the teachers. That would be good. Um, but then I want to 
also encourage you to um, read more academic literature and also going to the academic conferences. I think these are the two important channels through which you can probably identify um, your future uh, PhD supervisors. Okay. So I, I want to argue that actually by reading academic papers, you, you may be able to find your uh, PhD supervisors. Okay. <laughs> so what you need to do is to, to read as many research articles in your field as possible. So maybe uh, can, uh, can I can ask you a quick question. How many of you have been reading academic articles regularly? Yeah, okay. So I think I think it's very important for you to, well, if you are not doing it now, uh, not yet, so I think you should start uh, doing it now, okay? Read academic articles regularly, okay? Because that's how you can build your knowledge about the literature. Okay. Once you you build the knowledge of about literature, you you can then have a pretty good idea, or you have you will have a sense, you know, what are the important questions uh, that the scholars have been uh, working on. Okay. So because basically, when you think about uh, um, you know publishing a paper, you know publishing a paper, the most important or the most difficult part is actually you have to sort of first you have to get through the the editor. Okay. So the editor is very important. Editor will look at your manuscript and decide whether this paper is worth considering publication. A lot of manuscripts will just be rejected by the editor right away. But if the editor thinks it's good paper, then the editor will pass the paper to the reviewer. Okay, and you will never know who, who are the reviewers. Okay, but the reviewers are usually the, the scholars working on the similar topics that they know the, the topic pretty well. Okay, and then the reviewer will look at your, your manuscript and then give you some feedback, and then you you can start revising your manuscript. So the point here is that whatever problem you are working on, you know, it has to be somewhat relevant and interesting to other people, right? So uh, other scholars in the same field. But how do you know whether your topic will be interesting to, to them? Of course, you have to read their work, right? You read their work, you read their journal articles, and you can you can decide, you know, what are what would be the interesting question that you can explore? Okay, so that's why you have to read a lot of research articles. Okay, but then uh, I don't think you have to read a whole whole article, right? So basically, what you have to do is just read the uh, um, the titles and the abstracts. Okay, so so read the titles and abstracts. You can decide whether this is something relevant to your research interest. So if you only focus on title and, and abstracts, I think you, you can actually go through a lot of uh, uh, journal articles every day, right? But I think it's actually the the information you can find in the titles and abstracts it's quite uh, condensed. Right? You, you can get a lot of information um, from titles and abstracts. And if you find that interesting, then you can move on. You can read the uh, uh, introduction section, right? And the introduction section is very important because when the authors write the introduction, they try to uh, explain you know why this problem is important. Okay, so try to give the contextual uh, information, the background information, and then uh, try to explain and also justify, you know, why this is an important question. I think that's a very important uh, uh, issue for you to think about as a junior scholar. You have to tell, you know, whether a problem is important. Right? If you cannot pick the important question, important problem to deal with, then then your work won't be valuable, right? So that's as an initial step, very important. That's why you want to read the introduction because. Because that's how the author justify his or her work. And later on, when you write a journal article, you have to do the same thing. You have to justify, you have to convince the readers that whatever you're working on is actually valuable or important. Okay? And then you need to read the method section, right? MRD, right? Method section is also important because when you do the research, in the, the method section will describe how, for example, how to, to collect the data, how to analyze the data, and then you, if it's experiment work, then uh, you have to design experiments. You maybe involve different kind of uh, equipment or, or some kind of techniques for analyze the data. So you have to think about you know whether you will have the skills and abilities to actually replicate a study. Okay, because uh, part of the main feature of science is actually all the experiments and all the studies should be replicable. Okay, so so other people uh, in other independent labs should be able to do the work again to test whether. Uh, your work is actually reliable. Okay, so so this is where you can think about you know whether you have the skills to to do the work. Okay, and if you don't have the skills, then you you, you have to decide whether it's because well uh, you just don't want to do this, or maybe you need to develop this kind of skills. Okay, 
And then there's the result and uh, um, discussion sections. Usually, the results should be somewhat interesting, right? And also in the discussion section, the authors will talk about why the study is significant, what kind of contribution this study has uh, made to the field, okay? And, and somehow this should be uh, read along with the introduction. You go back to the intro introduction, and then you will have a better sense, you know, why this uh, work is important, why this work is is publishable, right? And uh, usually, the the author will also talk about the follow up study, you know, the needs for further studies, and maybe you you can decide whether you are interested in doing some kind of follow up study, okay? And and suppose you know if, if you think this work is interesting, you want to do some follow up study, then you could talk to the author. And that also could be your PhD supervisor. Okay, so this is how you know by reading uh, these academic articles, uh, you will be able to um, uh, identify the people who um, may be able to uh, supervise your work. So as you can see, uh, when we apply for the PhD program, you don't really want to start with the universities. Okay, uh, it's very different from undergraduates or master degree. Uh, because for undergraduate or master degree, you probably care about uh, the big names, right? You only go to the big names universities. But for PhD, I think the most important thing is to find a supervisor that can actually sort of his or her interests match match with yours. Okay, so that's the most important uh, uh, um, criteria criterion for you to um, select a, a supervisor. Of course, you know, you know, if, if there are a number of different supervisors or, or, or professors. Uh, working in, in the field, you can still maybe try to get into a better, uh, well-known uh, universities, right? <laughs> because if you graduate from a well-known universities, then you, you you will have a. I think other things being equal, you, you still have a better chance to to get a good job, right? So so that's how you know uh, you want to start with you know reading as many research articles as possible, uh, and hopefully in this process you will be able to identify uh, your potential uh, PhD supervisors, right? So I sort of um, list these steps for you to find your uh, PhD supervisor through literature. What you can do is, to begin with, you, you identify the top five journals in your field, okay? And then you can look at the editors of these journals. As, as I said earlier, the editors are very powerful people, okay? Because they can decide whether manuscript can be passed you know, the first round of checking to go to the reviewer, okay, and then they can decide who will be reviewing the manuscript, so they're very powerful people. So usually, the editors, if you if you get a chance to work, uh, you know, have the editors as your PhD supervisor, you, you will consider yourself very lucky, okay, because they're, they're very powerful. But of course, the catch is that they may not have enough time to supervise you, okay, because they, they got all this administrative or whatever uh, duties, right? And then there's the editorial board. Okay, so every journal has an editorial board. And in the editorial boards, uh, usually they are the uh, rather uh, senior or, or active members of the re research communities. And I would also encourage you to look into that name list. Okay, so in your field, these people are not necessarily uh, come uh, coming from the uh, top universities. Okay, it could be a uh, uh, less well-known university, or, or not even in the U.S., okay? It could be in Europe, okay? Then if, if it's in Europe, then you may consider doing a PhD in Europe, right? So so it's not a matter of where to where to do the PhD or which school you go to. It's the, it's the matter, you know, whether you can find the, the right supervisor, okay? And then also pay attention to the, uh, I don't know about your field, but in my field, which is language teaching, uh, langu uh, applied linguistics, we have these special issues, right? So from time to time, the journals will have a special issue, and then the guest editor will will um, um, to to um, edit the special issue, and and those people are also quite uh, uh, important, okay? And then there's also the review articles. You know, so so usually the the also of the review articles are more senior people, you know, they are the uh, big name scholars. So so you also want to maybe pay attention to these people, okay? And also, uh, I think a lot of journals nowadays, they publish the names of reviewers every year, okay? So, so every year, at the end of the year, they will say, okay, this list of people, these people review manuscript for the for the um, journal, so that's like uh, acknowledge their, their help. And again, that's your op opportunity, okay? So you can look at the reviewers, and, and these are also 
uh, your potential supervisors, all right? So and then you look through all the names, and then maybe you can identify some names that you may recognize. Okay, uh, if you you if you don't don't know any of them, then that, that means you need to do more reading. Okay, so as you read more uh, literature, okay, hopefully you you will get familiar with the names. It's it's very important that uh, because academic, you know, it's it's not just about you know doing the uh, doing the study. It's also about social. Okay? It's it's about uh, build your network and to to get to know people. Okay, to to build a relationship with other people. All right, so so you need to uh, know the people. All right. And hopefully you will be able to uh, find someone uh, in the list who, who is willing to supervise your PhD work. That will be very good because they are well, very well connected with the whole community, research community, and they, they can take you uh, to join the uh, research community, okay? Um, and also you try to make friends with them uh, in the conferences, right? That's why I encourage you to go to conferences because the conferences are where uh, the academics or researchers they they make friends they they socialize with one another okay okay so i will also talk a little bit about um you know how to uh, sort of read and also manage the literature effectively as i said you know the, the so this is a sort of preparation for your phd work first of all you have to focus on good journals okay because nowadays there's there's a lot of journals and you have to um, well, you can talk to your to your um, uh, teachers, and and maybe postgraduate postgraduate students in, in your department to to figure out you know what what are the good journals. Usually it's the SSCI or SSCI if you are from social science SSCI index journals are good journals, and EI index is probably also pretty good. And again, you read the titles and abstracts to filter the irrelevant uh, articles. And only focus on the articles that, that you find interesting. And then um, I would encourage you to also use uh, Zotero or Mendeley to build your own collection of academic papers. Anyone use Zotero or Mendeley? Yeah. Okay. So so that's that's also very important. Okay, because you need to you need to build your own uh, collection of um, uh, of academic papers. The paper that you you have read or at least you know, and maybe later on you know you want to look up for something, you can just go to Mendeley or Zotero. And you can you can look it up. And, you, and when you write a paper, you can also use this uh, program to to produce the in-text citations, the bibliography. It's all uh, very convenient. And uh, also, you, you don't have to always focus on the technical details. You know, when you, when you read an article, you don't have to read word by word. Okay, you only focus on the thing that you find interesting. Okay, otherwise you won't be able to cover uh, as, as many articles as you like. So try to understand the big pictures. Look at the introduction section. Look at the conclusion section to to get a main idea. You know why this work is important. What is the contribution? And the, the part that you don't understand, you can just skip for the moment, right? Maybe later on you can come back. And then the last one is quite important. You need to ask, you know, why this paper is publishable. Why this paper is novel? Okay. Actually, every research article published in the good journals. It's involved a lot of work, you know, because um, last year, I think in March, I got one SSCI uh, article published. So the, actually, it took 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 me like uh, almost a year. Okay, starting from submitting the the, the uh, research article to eventually get published. So this is a very long process, and it's it's very laborious and a lot of work. So, but eventually, when when the paper get published, it's it's a good paper. Okay, so so you need to think about why this paper is 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 publishable, why it is considered novel. It could be different reasons. Okay, so so you you may want to consider these different possibilities. Whether it's because the, this paper has some contribution to the theory building, or maybe the the, the theoretical part is is most uh, uh, interesting or outstanding. Or it could be because you know the, the the author applies some novel models or novel um, theories. Okay, um, the, the method could be could be the part that stands out. Or it could be the data. You know, maybe maybe the author has some very interesting data, uh, unique data that makes the paper uh, uh, stand out. Or it could be the results is kind of intuitive. Okay, so so you need to ask these questions: Why this paper is is uh, uh, um, uh, important? Or interesting, and because once you appreciate the value of a particular paper, you can then try to imitate and try to do some uh, equally or at least uh, <coughs> somewhat original work. Okay.
So I think this is sort of the process, not just uh, while you are applying for the PhD, but once you get into the PhD program, this is an ongoing process and try to look at the good papers and figure out, you know, uh, what they did right and then try to imitate and hopefully you will also be able to publish something. So so that will be something for you to to consider, all right? Yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. mm. Well, Dotero, Dotero is a, a computer program that um, you can basically uh, keep all your academic papers. Okay, so you, you can you can save the PDF uh, in in the program, and then also bibliograph uh, bibliographic information like the journal names, uh, uh, volumes, date, and all that. So so once you have like a database, and later on if you only cite that article, you can just uh, click or something, and then the citation can be created. So so that's the um, the basic function of of the tarot. Mentally is is quite similar. Okay, it's a it's an ongoing process. You know, at right right now you may only have a few uh, P PDF or a, a few uh, articles, but then as you move on, as you read more articles, you can collect all the papers in in, in your collection. Okay, so and then the next thing you can do is to try to meet your PhD supervisor in, in the conferences. So anyone who who've been to a conference, raise your hand. Okay. Yeah. Well, it's it's um it's kind of less uh, often or common for uh, undergraduates to uh, go to conference, but uh, actually strongly encourage you to at least go to one conference. You know, while you are still an undergraduate, because conferences actually feature uh, active researchers and also most recent research works. Okay. Well, in the conference, you will not be able to. Uh, see the, the, the published work. Usually it's the a work in progress. But that, that's where you can actually look at, you know, what is the most recent uh, development of the field. Okay, you can get a sense of, you know, what, 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 what is something that, that people uh, like to, to work on, okay? What is, uh, what is the hot topic, okay? So that, that's quite important. And I think it's also one of the most productive ways to keep up with the research development because within like uh, two or three days, you can go to you know up to twenty presentations or something like thirty presentations, right? And uh, you will be able to you know listen to these different ideas and and, and talk to um, the the authors, you know. It's and there's also poster section, right? So there's a poster you can talk to the to the study authors as well. So I think it's, it's a very um, a very useful experience. So I, I strongly encourage you to, to, to register for a conference. Okay, even if you do not present a paper, you can still register, right? Um, so this is a great opportunity to uh, network with key players in the field, right? Again, you know, the, the conference program would have the, the titles and abstracts. So read the titles and abstracts and you can decide whether a particular uh, presentation would be relevant and you want to you want to spend your time uh, uh, attending that, that, that presentation, right? And hopefully you, you will be able to, to find your PhD supervisors in the conferences. Especially, you know, each conference would have a keynote speaker, usually there's the more senior uh, members uh, of the research community, okay? And actually, I think the air tickets from Hong Kong is quite uh, af affordable, so so it, it, it may not cost as much as you, you, you imagine, you know, especially it's the, the off uh, peak season, right? So so I do encourage you to go to these conferences. So a few things to remember about the conferences. First of all, not all conferences are equal, right? So try to attend a conference that count. Okay, so so again you have to talk to your teachers to figure out, you know, you know, whether it's, this conference is is a good conference. So try to assess the quality and relevance of the conference by looking at who are the keynote speakers. Okay, if if, if they invite some some uh Big name professors or someone that you, you're interested, in, then then try to go to that conference, right? Also consult your teachers, consult the postgraduate students in your department. Maybe you can bring your name cards to network with the academics. Okay, networking is very important. Okay, even uh, even in the academic uh, field. Okay, so if you know the the people, you know, get feedback from them, you work with them, then you will have a higher chance to succeed. Um, and try to write a follow up emails to stay in touch with. The speakers, you know, so once you know, imagine someone pre after pre they present the, the papers, they get an email.
from someone, you know, saying, talking about their work, you know, asking questions. I think they will feel flattered, right? Okay, so so try to try to do these things. Networking, socializing is very important. So the points we we have covered so far, I just want to do a recap. Maybe we can take a short break. Be very cautious when you make decisions about uh, pursuing a PhD, all right? Because the cost is huge. But still, a PhD is worth the while for those who can succeed. Um, but you don't know whether you can succeed, right? So you have to figure out, you know, you have to do a very honest assessment. And choose a research area, okay, that fits your, your profile, fits your background, and find your supervisors, uh, potential supervisors via literature, via conferences, and via friends, okay? Again, the, the key point here is that uh, actually the preparation um, for writing the uh, personal statement is more important than the writing itself, okay? So so uh, I, um, let's take a, a five minutes break, and then uh, we can come back. If you have any questions, you can just... Oh, also, um, I have this evaluation form. You know, that evaluation form sort of reminds me, you know, about um, some sample personal statements. So actually, I I find, find a sample personal statement which we can we can probably uh, look at later. Okay, just remind me to give you this. All right, so um, let's move on. So let's take a look at the sample writing instructions. You know, when you write your personal statement, um, when you apply for different PhD program and write your personal statement, or sometimes it's called a statement of purposes. Uh, one thing you need to do is to look at the writing instructions provided by that particular program. Okay, so as I mentioned earlier in a, in the master uh, workshop, you know the the same of purpose is more or less you know a very conventionalized uh, genre. You know the 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 instruction could be quite similar uh, from one program to another, but you still want to read the uh, writing instruction very carefully and make sure you you follow the writing instruction when you write a personal statement. Okay, so uh, here this is just one writing instruction that I. I found in UCSD, uh, University of California, San, uh, San Diego. So uh, you want to, um, so the instruction says, uh, focus, uh, focus your same purpose on the reasons you're interested in attending a specific uh, graduate program, right? And there's some specific in instructions. And then just here you can see, before submitting the same, seek constructive comments and criticism from friends and, and advisors. So, so the feedback is actually very important. All right, so um, but but that's that's just a sort of a beginning, you know, the, of the a general uh, writing instruction. But then we can look at more closely. It says there are five primary topics that you want to cover in your statement of purpose, your personal statement. The first question is how did you become interested in this field? It's actually that you have had a long-term interest in the field. So 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 basically, you only make an argue, argument that you have a long-term interest, which is different from just a Sort of a very short term. Suddenly, you have this this interest, right? So, so basically, the the readers want to make sure that you are serious, you are committed to this program because doing a PhD is, uh, you know, it's very time consuming and it takes a lot of work, okay? And uh, that you have taken positive steps in pursuing your your interest. So maybe maybe you want to uh, talk about your undergraduate work, your project experiences, you know, to to um show them that you have pursued this interest for a while. You know, this is not just a um, sort of a <laughs> whimsical um, thought, okay? Give the um, co uh, committee members a sense of your particular talents and, and abilities. So as you can see here, your, your interest should be very closely related to your talents and abilities. You, if you're good at something, then you're probably interested. Or if you're interested, then you can develop your, your talents and abilities, okay? So that will be the first topic uh, in your personal statement. And then the second question is, what experiences have contributed towards your preparation for further study in the field, okay? Here basically um, is to look at, you know, whether you are ready, whether you are well prepared and well trained for the PhD program, okay? So you need to um, demonstrate your interest um, by providing examples of research experiences, internship, uh, work experiences, and publications, okay, so these are all important. If you can uh, talk about your past experiences in these areas, and then you can make the case that actually, um, you know, you are well prepared 
uh, well trained to uh, to take the challenge of the PhD program. I sort of crossed out the community service and life experience because this instruction is for all graduate programs, including PhD and master. But I think for PhD, because it's a research degree, you should focus on research. Unless you know you are doing community service that can that is uh, closely related to your to your uh, study. For example, if you are doing some social work or sociology, maybe the community service is the field work for you to collect the data. Then maybe you want to talk about the community service. Otherwise, you know you want to focus on the experiences that are actually relevant to your research. Okay, and briefly describe what you did in each experience. Also, make sure to articulate what you have learned f about the field and how those lessons stimulated you to pursue an advanced degree. Okay, I think this instruction is very clear and very informative. Uh, you want to talk about the ex experience, but you also want to talk about what you have learned from the experience. The learning is a is a major theme uh, uh, in your in your personal study because when you talk about your learning experiences, the the readers can actually assess you know sort of how good uh, you are you know, as, as a learner, as a researcher, okay? What, what's your research potential, okay? So that's why this is very important. And, and also, hopefully, this kind of learning experiences, the lessons you learn could be uh, one of the major reasons, one of the major motivations for you to um, do a PhD, okay? So again, you want to relate uh, such experiences with your decision to do a PhD, okay? So that's the second question. <clears throat> the third question, what are your future goals? But again, you know, the writing instruction is, is for both master and a PhD program. And um, so you want to talk about your future goals and also you want to state your degree objectives. So that, that is, you know, when you uh, pursue this degree, you know, what are the objectives that you want to, you want to uh, uh, meet, you want to achieve, okay? And remember last, last night, yesterday, we talked about, you know, some of the master programs. Uh, with the list of intended learning outcomes, right? So that would be something to to look at. I don't know whether a whole lot of PhD program would have an intended learning outcome because I think for most PhD pro programs, the intended learning outcome is to, to produce good researchers. Okay, so the outcome should be you will have a very good thesis and also you got a few good papers, okay, published. That will be the intended learning outcome, all right? So, and then you want to specify what the sub subdisciplines Okay, the keyword is subdiscipline. You don't want to just say, okay, I'm interested in, in chemistry or, or Chinese literature. Okay, you have to look at a specific area in that discipline. Okay, that you want to uh, pursue. And here's an example. If you are applying in polit political science, the committee needs to know whether you are pursuing American politics, comparative politics, international relations, or political theory. So these are the different sort of uh, subtopics under political science. So similarly, in your fields, there, there should be some subtopics that you want to uh, pick and choose and decide. Well, that's going to be your focus. Let the readers know that you are planning uh, a future career as a university professor or researcher or consultant or in the public service or private practice. Okay, so so in your personal statement, you need to talk about your your, your future plan, okay, how you want to use the degree. I think this is where it's quite uh, similar to uh, what we talked about yesterday. So again, I want to encourage you to, to actually watch that video, okay, later when it is available uh, about, you know, writing personal statement for master. Okay, so that's the third question. The fourth question, what are your research interests? Okay, so this is a more straightforward uh, a question here, you know, what are your research interests? Within your subdiscipline, you should be able to Identify one or two topics that are of interest to you. Okay, so so here you, you have to be very explicit and very uh, specific. You know what are the topics you want to pursue, you want to study as a PhD student. This is probably more important when you are uh, apply for a PhD program, because basically the the admission committee they have to decide whether the faculty members of the department would have the expertise to um, support you to supervise your work. Okay. When possible, be specific about your research agenda. That means you, you need to have a timeline. You know, you know what what would be you know something that you want to you want to cover in the next uh, three to five years. Remember that you will be working with professor in research. Therefore, your research interests should parallel those of the faculty. Okay, so so that's that's quite up. It's quite clear. You know, something you need to do. But then there's some some kind of you know qualification here, okay? You will usually not be expected to know exactly what you want to 
research. Okay, so this is different from the UK or Hong Kong uh, PhD program. In the US, you will have more time to explore. So, but still, you want to identify a, a sub area, or sub discipline, right? Um, but and the faculty know that initial interests often change. Okay, so so it's not like you have to commit yourself to that particular uh, research area. But when you write your uh, personal statement, you need to tell, uh, convince the readers that you know what you're talking about. You know, you know what you're doing. Okay, when you, when you apply for the PhD program. And then the, the last question is also probably the most important question is how are you a match uh, for the program to which you are applying? Okay, so so you have to sort of um, look at you know who you are, you know your strengths, your skills, your background, and what you need. Okay, what kind of um, uh, weaknesses that you want to um, address, you want to strengthen um, through the PhD program, and how the program would provide the resources, the training, you know the the teachers. That can actually help you to to realize your goals to to achieve your goals, right? So explain uh, what attracts you most to the institution program to which you are applying, and this is where you have to be sort of you have to do your homework about the program, right? Because they ask you, you know what are the tr attractive features of the program. Of course, you have to do the uh, homework and know know more about the program before you can answer that question, right? Align your uh, research interests with those of one or more of the affiliated professors. Okay, so that's also quite important. You now, the better the match with the program and professor, the better the chance that you will be admitted. Okay, recently I I was talking with a, a friend of mine who who is uh, teaching at Yale. You know, she's an associate professor at Yale um, School of Public Health, and I was talking with her. You know how uh, their department uh, um, take the PhD students. Uh, so basically, there are actually two different. Well, there are three sources of PhD students uh, at Yale uh, School of Public Health. The first is um, the department would have some budget. Okay, the department would have, have some budget to take maybe one or two PhD students every year. Okay, that's the first source, you know. I think for those students, you don't necessarily... Well, I think, I think uh, you still have to have some research interest that's matched with the faculty members, but not necessarily with a specific uh, faculty members, because everyone will participate in the evaluation process um, to to decide who will get uh, uh, the offer. But then the second source of the PhD students is actually the faculty members, the specific professors or associate professors. They probably get some money, okay, somewhere. They, they got some funding, so they can use that funding to to recruit one or two, uh, support one or two uh, uh, PhD students. If that's the case, then that particular faculty member who get the money to support a, a student will have more say, you know, have more sort of voting power to to decide who will be the uh, to get the offers. If that's the case, then probably you want to they, they must be a match with with that particular professor, right? And actually, the, there is third source, which is um, nowadays uh, the the university has a partnership with a number of Chinese universities. So through that program, uh, there will be some students who can get into the program. Okay. But anyway, so so as you can see, you know, the match is very important okay, because because the professors will have to decide, you know, whether whether they can supervise you. Okay. So just to summarize, you know, based on the five questions, we can sort of uh, have a list of the issues that uh, we need to discuss uh, uh, in the a personal statement. First of all, you want to talk about your, the development of your interest, uh, along with the related abilities and talents. Okay, so interests go hand in hand with ability and talents. Okay, but how do you develop your interest as well as your abilities and, and talents? It's basically through the coursework as well as projects, and and maybe you also talk about the reading the literature, and going to conferences. That's also where you can uh, maybe develop your interest. Okay. And then you talk about the preparation, okay? You want to make the case that you are well prepared for the program. So again, you want to uh, look at the different uh, experiences that you you have had at undergraduate level and how these experiences prepare you for the further studies. And um, you want to show that you know you have these experiences and you have developed this and this uh, abilities or skills or talents. And then that will be the skills and abilities that's necessary to do well in a, a program. Okay, you want to talk about your objective, degree objectives, 
and your future career goals. And in the case of PhD, basically your objective is to get a PhD, you know, and um, um, and then the the career will have to be research related, okay. And then you want to identify your research interest in the subfield and also the potential supervisor. That's also very important. And and most importantly, uh, how you are a match with the program. So you want to um, make the case that you are a good match. So that's why you want to do your homework about the PhD programs, right? I want to talk a bit about the coursework. Um, that's quite important. I think I also talk about that in the in the master workshop. So basically, uh, I would encourage you to try to review all the courses that you have taken at HKBU and try to connect the dots. All right, and you want to think about how the undergraduate program uh, has been designed to help you to build a knowledge structure. So so go back to your transcript. Okay, you have a transcript, right? So imagine that. The admission officer will look at your transcript. Okay, they, they look at your transcript, but they will probably focus on some of the courses that would prepare you for the more advanced course uh, that we, we will do as a PhD. Okay, so, so you need to maybe highlight, okay, so these are the courses uh, I have done uh, in the university, and uh, this in these courses I have developed certain background or, or some skills, and then I will apply these skills when I take the courses at a doctoral level. Okay, so, so you can connect the courses that you have done with the courses that you will be doing at the doc doc doctor level, okay? So you, you want to ask this question, what areas do you need more coursework training, okay? So so where this is where the, the HKBU coursework could be connected to the doctoral uh, coursework. And uh, I think in, in the in the personal statement, you should probably spend, you know, um, maybe write one paragraph uh, to talk about this. And of course, you have to review the a coursework requirement of the of the PhD program. Usually, you can go to the website, and there will be maybe a PhD handbook, or there's a like some information about the curriculum. That's where you can find all the requirements. You know, there should be some core courses, some elective courses that you have to take. Okay, and I think in in the U.S. Uh, before you can become a PhD candidate, you know, you know from a PhD student to a PhD candidate, you need to sort of take a qualifying exam. So maybe you also also want to um, you know, ask around and try to get some information about that as well. And then I want to say a few words about research experiences and transferable skills. And this is actually one of the issues that you uh, we, we look at in the in the one of the questions. Okay, so basically, uh, you need to consider the research projects that you have been involved in. Okay, and because these are the things that you need to talk about uh, in the personal statements. And I think this is something I mentioned in the master workshop as well. Um, I would encourage you to adopt the IMRD uh, framework, okay, introduction, method, result, uh, discussion. So this is the sort of a general framework to uh, organize your research paper. And also when you talk about any research project, you can and try to adopt this framework. In order, to, uh, in order to develop a narrative uh, of the project, and then you want to identify the skills that you have developed and also consider how the skills could be um, transferable. Okay, so so the, the this point is very important because you know the the, the experience that you, you have at undergraduate level, the kind of research project that, that you are involved may not be necessarily uh, related to the, the research topic or research interest that you want to pursue at doctoral level. Right? So so um maybe the you can't really uh, make the case that uh, the experience at undergraduate level can actually um, prepare you for the um, directly related to your to your future work, and that's where you can make uh, use this concept called transferable. Okay, so you can say, okay, well, even though these are the two different topics or, or whatever, still you know the skills that I have uh, developed, I have demonstrated in the undergraduate uh, research project, I can apply the same skills or similar skills to the uh, doctoral work, okay, so that would be uh, quite a good argument, okay. And um, then you want to talk about what you have learned from the project experiences, right, and how this kind of learning or, or lessons would sort of inform your future research or, or motivate your future research, okay. So, so, so that would be something you need to uh, keep in mind when you write the paragraph about uh, research experiences or uh, transferable skills. 
And then、um, maybe a few words on the readers of the personal statements. Okay, one thing you want to keep in mind is that the readers of your personal statements are actually faculty members of the department. Okay, so so these are the experts、uh, in your fields. So they're not actually interested in your childhood experience. Okay, so I, I know a lot of people who who write personal statement and start with you know when 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 I was a kid, you know I. My my parents bring me to blah blah blah, and I get amazed blah blah, blah and then so 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 that kind of、um, you know、um, childhood experience you don't want to talk about it, and also you know some people like to say you know that they change their major or something you know again this this kind of details or it's not something relevant okay or extracurricular activities okay but don't talk about extracurricular activities unless you know you have a special reason to to justify it, okay. But but you want to talk about whether the you know you share the research experience、uh, research interest with them you know, the research interest actually match, or you have the skill they need in a research team. Okay, so remember when you、uh, do a PhD as a PhD student, basically you exchange your relatively cheap labor, inexpensive labor for a degree. Okay, so so you want to convince them that you you are actually very useful. Okay, then they they will probably consider taking you. And also whether you are serious about doing the research and you know, about the commitment, okay? So, so, so that will be something to to、um, consider when you write a personal statement. Okay, so we can move on just to give you a sample outline as I did for the master workshop, starting with the introductory paragraph. Maybe you want to use some kind of gambit, you know, or attention getters. I think the best gambit would be. Or attention getter is just to talk about the specific research question or topic that you like to explore, and and if there's a match, then it will, will be very good、uh, attention getter, okay. And and try to write a one sentence summary of all your answers to the questions in the writing instruction. So you have to go back to the writing instruction and read the writing、uh, instruction multiple times, and make sure that you you. Highlight all the important questions or topics that you want to address, okay, and try to write a one-sentence summary, okay, to address all the、um, questions. So this is basically a thesis statement, okay, that would cover all the main points very briefly. Because once the 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 reader finish reading the introduction paragraph, you should already provide most、uh, of the key information, okay, that they they need, okay, and the rest of the Body parallel would be just as the boring details and elaborations, okay. And also, do not quote famous people, okay, or say anything philosophical, okay. So, just just to to be more straightforward, because you are dealing with your colleagues in the same field, okay. So so cut the unnecessary things. And then my my suggestion is that you 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 can、uh, maybe try to、uh, write about your coursework in the second paragraph. And、just try to highlight some of the important courses that you have taken, and also relate them to the future courses and and future research. Okay, you you want to that emphasize that you have、uh, got a background uh, and uh, and background knowledge and the training that that、uh, you need to do the PhD work. If possible, maybe you can discuss you know how different courses have helped you to build a solid background in the field. You know, try to connect the dots. If there are any courses that you did not do well. You may explain here, but again, it's only if you have a legitimate reason. Okay, so if you just just you know, I mean, if, if, for example, if you you were very sick, you know, for a semester, you, you didn't do well, then it could be a reason. Okay, but if you just like um, I you spend a lot of time playing video game or something, that wouldn't be a legitimate reason, right? Okay, and then the the next paragraph, you can talk about research experience. I think you can discuss up to two research projects. Don't don't write too much, right? Just try to focus on、um, two. Again, adopt the IMRD model,、uh, IMRD framework. That's a very good framework. You don't want to sort of go into the the details or technical details. Like sometimes people want to say, "Well, I, I spend a lot of time reading literature in English," especially the the, the students in in Chinese universities, right? Because they they don't usually have the chance to read the、uh, In English, so they think it's a it's very big deal, but 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 in fact, you know, it's it's not a big deal for the for the readers, right? Or any kind of repetitive lab work that you spend weekends or even、um, stay、uh, stay in the school for the Chinese New Year. So this this kind of stories are not 
very relevant either. So try to, I think it's very important to try to explain why this project is important and innovative. Okay, why why you think this is actually a worth worthwhile project? Okay, it's it's kind of similar when when you write a uh, uh, introduction, you want to justify, you know, the value of, of your work, and try to highlight the skills that you have developed. That's very important. If it's transferable skills, then um, you know, highlight the fact that it's transferable, and also uh, discuss how this project inspired you to to further your studies. If there's any inspiration or motivation uh, coming from that project, one thing you need to think about is. Try to think like a, a scientist instead of a technician, okay? because as a junior sort of junior member of the research team, as an undergraduate, you are probably just given some rather sort of routine works or or, or works that that not necessarily uh, involve a lot of skills, or it's just a sort of a technical work. But still, you want to look at the big picture. You want to think about you know what is the theory or what is the sort of the uh, the contribution of the of the project. Okay, so because when you do a PhD, okay, as a PhD student, you are you are doing original research. Okay, so so you, you need to look at your experience from a different perspective. Right, it's also very important. And then fourth paragraph, you can talk about a research plan. Okay, so so you want to do a PhD, you want to um, talk about um, what you want to work on. It doesn't have to be a very detailed, very well designed plan. You know because. You you're just applying for the PhD program. You're not in the PhD program yet, but um, still you want to somehow give the the readers an impression that you have given a lot of thought um, to uh, what you need to do. So you only describe the research area you plan to focus on, and hopefully you can refer to the literature. Okay, that's where it's very important for you to read the literature in advance in order to to highlight. Okay, uh, in the literature people have done this and this and that. But then there's a gap somewhere, you know. This is where I want to contribute, you know, to the to the uh, literature. Okay. So you you can use the literature to 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 provide a context for your research interests, and then you need to relate your research interests back to the coursework and back to the research experience that you talk about in the previous two paragraphs, right? So that's how you can achieve coherence, right? And you need to explain why this is important and this is an exciting research area, because that's how you can prove to the readers that you actually commit yourself to the research program. You know, the, the the main motivation of doing a PhD program, you know, for five years is that you actually think this is a very important, and exciting um, topic to work on. Okay, as as I mentioned earlier, this is going to be the most uh, productive five years in your life. Right? It has to be a a worthwhile project, and then you can talk about why this program, okay? So you can talk about you know because this program, the PhD program, actually offers some coursework. So how this coursework can actually help you to build the foundational knowledge and skills for you to further pursue your research interest, and also talk about the faculty members um, who have the expertise to support your work. And how your research interests would align with the research agenda of the faculty members and the department. Okay, because usually, um, for each department, they would have a group of researchers sharing, you know, to some extent sharing um, the research interest broadly, because then they can build a strength as a department, right? So, so you need to think about, you know, how this. Different faculty members and the department is trying to advance their research agenda and see whether you can fit in um, with their research agenda. And uh, one thing you don't want to talk about is the reputation of the university. You know, even if it is a big name university, you don't want to say anything about it because you are applying for the program. You are not applying for the university. Okay. And do not talk about your plan to return to China. Well, not a lot of students who talk about that, you know. And 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 after that, you can write a concluding paragraph to try to illustrate the main points, All right? So that's sort of a, a suggested outline, which again, it's just for your reference. You know, you ha you can still make your own decisions. You know, to revise it and modify it based on um, your 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 own situation. 
Okay. So that's about personal statement, and and I will say a few more words very briefly about uh, what we call touts. Okay, contact contact the, the um, prospective supervisors. Well, the first thing you want to know about touts is actually only a small percentage of the professor will reply. Okay, so don't get disappointed if you send out like ten or twenty emails, maybe no reply at all. You know because. Only the professor who have the money, okay, the funding to recruit the students and also find your case interesting, would probably reply. Okay, I, I think um, usually it's the assistant professor, okay, from the less well-known universities. Okay, they are probably more interested in you know this kind of uh, uh, cold email. Because they have the motivation to try to identify some students who are serious, who would commit themselves to the PhD program. Okay, because think about you know all these professors, assistant professors, they are also competing for good students, right? If they work very hard to get some funding, they have the money to hire to to support the PhD students. They want to make sure they can find a student, right? But 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 good students always have. More than one choices, right? So that's where, that's why people want to do this kind of sort of backdoor uh, dealing. You know, make sure that they they can get the students. And then, uh, if you only increase the chance of getting a reply, I think you should try to uh, use your uh, network. Okay, try to talk to the ACBU professors, teachers, or your friends, and try to you know if if. Uh, you can contact the, the professor who are the friends of this uh, professor or your friends, and you will have a higher chance to get a get a reply. Not necessarily you will get an offer, but at least you will get a reply, right? But maybe the reply is just saying I don't have the money this year or something. Then you can move on to try the next, right? Well, this one is is pretty difficult, but um, I think it's it's worth the the, the efforts. It's that if you are really serious about you know. Um, Working with this professor, you should read uh, his or her recent publications. Okay, not like uh, in details. At least you want to read the title, the abstracts, and maybe introduction a little bit, a little bit of the conclusion. So you you have a basic idea of what this professor is doing. Okay, so so it would be it would be much more likely to find a match if you think or if you look at a publication and find that actually um, this is the work that you you want to do. Okay, so this is where we go back to the importance of reading literature, right? Okay, so so if you read the literature, you find some papers, you know, this is interesting. You can just talk to the authors, right? And again, um, I would encourage you to to actually um, reach out and try to visit the campus uh, and also go to the conferences, so you can meet the professor in person. Maybe just just one or two minutes, you know, face to face. That's going to be much more effective than uh, writing a cold email, right? Okay. But then you have to practice oral English, right? Make sure that you you have the confidence to 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 speak. And now I, I will say um, a few words about reference letters, okay? Re recommendation letters. I think, as I said earlier, your referees should be your close friends and allies when it comes to applying for the PhD program. You you. He or she should be the resource person to help you as much as you uh, as they can. Okay, so so try to find some people, some faculty members who are willing to help you, and to talk to them and get to know what they think of you as a student. Okay, to to get an honest uh, evaluation or assessment uh, of 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 yourself. Okay, that that would be very important when you make decisions on whether you want to do a PhD or not, and and show your referees. Uh, your resume and also your PS draft, your personal statement drafts, because then they can have a better idea, you know, um, uh, where you are, you know, whether you are you are ready for the PhD program. Okay, this also make it easier for them to draft their reference letters. Depending on different uh, teachers, you know, some teacher would probably ask you to write an outline, or sometimes they even ask you to write a, a draft a, a letter. That's not surprising. So. You can ask them. You know, maybe they just want to write it themselves, or if if they need some help, then help them. Okay, make sure it's 
because actually write, writing reference essays is a lot of work, you know. So you, you want to reduce the workload uh, for your referees, right? And again, ask the referees to recommend you to his or her colleagues um, in the U.S. or U.K. or other universities. Okay. And uh, I think for PhD uh, programs, uh, PhD admissions, sometimes you will you if you are shortlisted, maybe you'll get an interview. Okay, because again the the uh, admission committees they want to make sure that you are the right candidates because that's a huge commitment for them as well, right? A lot of money would be put in to support you for a few years, for five years or something. So before the interview, you want to review a resume and also look at your personal statement and other uh, any other documents related. Okay, before the interview, and then you try to list some of the main points and topics that may arise during during the interview. Okay, so you have to brainstorm a little bit. Okay, and then for each point and each topic, you need to practice a six sixty seconds mini talk. Okay, so actually you have to do the do the a rehearsal. Okay, to practice as much as you can. So this way you will be well prepared. When you do the interview, because the interview usually is not face to face; it's like Skype or, or telephone or something. So the, the communication is not uh, quite smooth sometimes. So you have to make sure that uh, you are well prepared. Okay. Uh, and also, you want to prepare some questions for the interviewer as well, because this is actually two way street. Okay. So so they are vetting you, and you are also vetting them. Okay. You 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 have to decide whether they are actually the right program for you. Okay. So so that's that's for the interview. Right. So, so basically, as a follow up for this workshop, you know, I think you, you should try to prepare a, a very detailed outline for the for the personal statement, and then you want to seek feedback. I think this is quite similar to the master、uh, workshop. So, you want to write a detailed outline based on the sample outline provided, and then fill in the keywords and terms specific to your situations. Again, do not draft your full text PS before. Getting feedback from at least three people, including your language teacher, your discipline experts, your the professors in your in your department, and also your friends from other fields. You know, a layman without any technical background. You want to make sure that they can somewhat understand your personal statement as well. So get as much feedback as possible. This is the picture I I took in Seattle. It's in Facebook company. You know,、um, the office feedback is a gift. <clears throat> so、um, for the follow up tutorial at the language center, I will. Provide you the details later, but this is going to be conducted in virtual mode.、Uh, what's going to happen is, well, I didn't change the slides here. Send a, send me a summary of your PhD program or the, the PhD program that that you want to apply, including the writing instruction、um, for personal statement and detailed outline of your personal statement. Include any specific questions you may have about the outline. Don't ask the general question. Okay. And then, if you get some feedback from other people, maybe also include those feedback as well, right? And then I will give you some feedback on the outlines, and then you can revise your outline and write your full full text draft, and then you can send it to me for further comments. I'm still talking with my colleagues at Language Center, you know how the logistics will work, and hopefully, I will I will be able to help you, okay,、um, when you write the personal statements. Right. So the final reminder, just a typo there. Sorry. The final reminder. There's this wow and aha. Okay. So what what is wow? You know, wow is like when you are amazed by the scientific discovery and breakthroughs in your fields. And aha is when you finally solve a puzzle in your research and feel intense satisfaction and happiness. So I think the wow and aha experiences are very important. If you have this kind of moments, this kind of experiences. Then that's the sign that maybe you 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 will succeed as a PhD student. Okay, so that's all. And this is the acknowledgement. We、uh, I would like to、um, thank all these individuals and all of you for coming to the workshop. All right, thank you. And now I will open the floor for question and answers.